Hello Aries, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Aries, here is your three by two. And I do think it's a little bit challenging because of the whip and dog on the right hand side of the three by two, but we do have some lovely cards here, mainly the flowers and the child. Now, I'm picking up a change because of the child. And so when we see the whip after that, it usually tells me that the transition towards that change is a bit rough, but it usually means it's because of you embracing a new beginning or a new chapter or a change that you need to go through this a little bit. Now, the tower and whip, and I have to say that your corner cards are telling in this three by two, the tower and whip suggest a release from the past. There could have been an issue from the past, but it also is about releasing the past because when we see the tower with the child, it means turning a chapter, turning a page to a new chapter. And we also have the flowers and child, and this has to do with healing. Same with the flowers and tower. So we have quite a few different combinations here that tell us, Aries, that you're in for a new beginning and that you are ready to let go of something that had been uh, challenging from a past chapter. Now, the child and dog is usually a new relationship, a new friendship, a new colleague, um, someone new in your life. It could also be someone like you, like who does service to you. So for example, an accountant, uh, someone at the bank, a lawyer possibly. Usually lawyers are, you know, they take bigger cars than a dog but it's, it's possible. So it looks like there's a new relationship, a new connection here, and we see that it comes in the wake of this uh, release from the past. Now, looking at the top row, we have here what I think is a reunion. So uh, releasing the issue, but it's also possible that you reconnect with this person. So forgiveness is very much a possibility. We have the tower, flowers, and dog, and this usually means reconnecting with someone from the past. Um, it is also a very good combination for renewal and also you could be after long-term objectives and a sense of ambition and creativity and also enthusiasm moving forward. And so in this context, it points to a new relationship that inspires you or that supports you in this regard. So as you can see, there's a few different possibilities that are coming through the cards. Uh, when we wrap up, we'll go through them again. Now, the child fox and whip would be the more challenging line, um, and also the dog and whip is challenging. So we have the fox and whip together, Aries, and typically this points to a trap that's played out or someone who tries to throw something your way. Um, and I think it's because you are moving into a new beginning, I feel that someone could be trying to prevent that from happening. So someone could be trying to make things difficult for you Maybe it's someone who is um, competitive, who doesn't want you to move ahead with this new project, or there's a bit of envy here, or just, you know, outright silliness. And so it's very clear here, Aries, that in view of your new beginning, someone tries to prevent you from moving forward or makes like life difficult for you. And when we look at the dog and whip in here, it also supports this idea. It supports this idea that there is a person who is trying to block you, block you from moving forward. Now, I think that this ch difficult person, I don't feel that it's the same person who would be um, supporting you moving forward, who is someone you reconnect with um, after maybe some time apart. But we'll put together the scenarios when we wrap up all the, when we go through all of the combinations. So the child and tower, like I said, is a renewal from the past. It's a new chapter. It is typically turning the page on the past and moving into a new beginning. The flowers and fox, here's a tricky one, Aries. I typically take this combination to suggest someone who's a little bit false to your face, you know, who tries to, you know, who tries to be clever and they don't really mean it. And then finally, we have the dog and whip. Like I said, this is a challenging pair. So there are a few possible scenarios in here, Aries. I think, um, I think in general, you could be reconnecting with someone and perhaps an issue comes back up with this person. I still think that it's a good thing that you're reconnecting with this person. Another suggestion is that you have an opportunity to move into a new beginning and someone tries to make your life difficult, tries to prevent you from doing that. So these are the two main scenarios that come through. Now, these scenarios can apply in different, 
areas of your life. It could be a job thing, it could be a personal thing, it could be in any other area of your life. The same idea applies. Uh, to wrap up, we have the tower with the fox and dog. This would be a good combination for work. And um, so here you could be maybe moving into a new job or maybe getting a new colleague. And this is the colleague that proves to be a bit difficult. And then this diagonal, similarly uh, to the other lines that I talked about, I feel that someone tries to block you or you face up to some challenges as you turn the page. Now, Aries, I'm not saying that you shouldn't move into this new beginning. I think you ought to. I think it looks good for you. I just think that you might face some resistance as you try to embrace this new beginning. Um, that's, in the, that's in that scenario. And if it's about a, a person or a connection here that you are uh, getting back in touch with, I think previous issues can come back into the surface. But I do want to emphasize the idea of moving past these issues areas and being willing to forgive and embrace uh, a new beginning. So even if you're still working through the issues and you know bringing them back up, just keep in mind that open mind and um, that willingness to forgive. So a very interesting set of cards, I would say, Aries. I certainly look forward to hearing from you which scenario you think played out. As always, I look forward to your comments. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with the Lenormand Silhouettes deck. This is my own deck. Let's go ahead and deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Taurus, here is your three by two. It is looking a little bit tricky because we have the snake and the cards. And the snake next to a person card, like the man or other person cards, they can be a bit tricky. It can suggest someone who is a bit deceptive, who doesn't mean what they say, who could be doing things behind your back, and in general, someone to watch out for and not to uh, trust so much. Now, what's interesting is that the first set of corner cards, we have the clover and man, and usually this is a very lucky pair, so it would suggest good things coming through this person. But I have to say that maybe it's an appearance. And so you want to be careful that, you know, with the snake being next to the man, and as we're going to see the snake between the clover and moon, you know, it can be uh, like not someone you can take at face value. There could be things going on behind the scenes. Now, the bear and moon suggest an important invitation or some kind of appreciation that comes your way. But again, you know, I think Taurus, because of the snake, it might not be something that they mean. And it could also be something that is not fully aligned uh, with you, your values, etc. So I would watch out for an offer or an invitation or someone who's trying to invite you to something. It might not be exactly what you're, what you would like. And also there could be something going on behind the scenes. So with the clover and cross and moon, this tells me that the decision that you make is important. And we see the cross on top of the snake. So again, there is a clear message, Taurus, that you want to be aware of what kind of offer is coming your way. You want to evaluate it well, and you want to make sure that it is aligned uh, with the things that you want. I think because of the cross and snake, snake and man, snake and moon, I'm not so sure this is going to be aligned with you, uh, Taurus, but do your part and look into it and see what you come out with. Now, the bear, snake, and man, this is the trickier line because the snake is closest to the man and the snake is more toxic when it's next to people cards. There are contexts where the snake is clever and smart, uh, but with people cards, it's usually a red flag. So with the bear, snake, and man, this can be something significant because the bear makes everything big. The bear can also suggest a manager or someone in authority. And I also think that they could be, you know, they could be a bit of a, a passive aggressive type. And uh, I think it's important that you be aware of that. Also, Taurus, if you are working with people of influence or there are certain characters around you that are more or less tricky, it's important that you don't be a bull in a china shop. You want to be discreet and diplomatic so that you know how to navigate the space. But be aware all throughout. Now, the clover and bear points to 
a nice opportunity. It usually points to wealth and ambition and big steps. Um, but I think with the cross and snake coming right after the clover and bear, you need to temper your ambition or your enthusiasm for this opportunity because of this man situation or this person who is tricky. So again, with the cross and snake, temper it down, assess things very carefully. The moon and man suggests an offer or an invitation coming through this person. It can also be some kind of attraction in a personal relationship. But again, I have to say, Taurus, because of the snake in the cards and because of the different combinations that it figures in, especially being closest to the man, I think it's important that you you know that you be aware who you're getting involved with or what this person's intentions are so i would say take it slow i'm not saying i'm not saying pass a judgment and close the door on this person that's not what i'm saying i'm saying you need to check it out better you need to sense check it better and you need to navigate it more slowly more cautiously so that you're aware of the undercurrents and any other thing that could be going on probably behind the scenes now the clover snake and moon is pretty telling the snake and moon would be an offer that you want to stay away from usually um, again I think you know be diplomatic and navigate it it might appear to be nice but maybe it's not so nice you know or maybe there's more stuff going on that doesn't um, that doesn't immediately show through and you need to discover this and the bear cross and man can be this person um, you know with uh, who this whole situation is is connected with this invitation this offer and this relationship so again it sounds like they are uh, in a position of authority you know someone of influence and with the cross here it sounds like uh, you know it's a bit of a burden on you maybe you have to deal with this person so again the snake is very clear in being calm and cautious if you're invited to something or you're asked to do some things I'm, I, again, I'm not so sure it's aligned with your Taurus, but I think you need to be careful about how you, let's say, turn it down or how you manage it or how you deal with it. Uh, I think these ideas usually come up in a context like work and other situations. In a personal relationship situation, I think that it's about getting to know this person a bit better. I think they could have some intentions that are not maybe fully aligned with you. The snake in love relationships, Taurus, is often a card of um, cheating and deception. Now, I'm not seeing like additional cards that would support that, but in case this is something that you're questioning or that could be at play, again, the cards are generally easy and peaceful, even if they're a bit heavy, even if it's a bit, you know, tricky. Um, it's uh, it's a bit of a smoother um, sale. So the thing about your card stores is that we're not seeing a conclusion to this just yet in the cards. We are seeing what is happening, the process of it, but not so much what happens after this. So stay tuned, maybe for next week it would come up. Um, so for the time being, for this week, Taurus, just take it easy. Don't lock horns, don't uh, close doors. Um, you know, just sort of get to know the situation. Just be aware that there could be more than meets the eye and take it easy. And remember to be diplomatic, respect the chain of command and, you know, just be smooth and, um, you know, as you move forward. I also want to suggest to us that you keep your priorities in mind. I think this is going to help you assess a situation better relative to what is important to you. So keeping that foremost in mind. So an interesting set of cards, a little bit tricky. Let me know what you make of them, how they figure in your situation. It's always nice to see how different people resonate with the same set of cards. Best of luck with the week, Taurus, as always. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a 3 by 2 today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Gemini, this is a pretty challenging set of cards. We have quite a few of them in here. And uh, the message is really clear. This is pointing to an ending, a moving away, a break up, a break off. You know, there isn't really a way to sugarcoat this. And as you know, I don't really sugarcoat anything. Um, and it is time uh, to, to move away. Now, I do get a hint from the anchor 
that you could have been possibly stuck in a situation. So despite the challenging energy of these cards, it can be an opportunity to get out of a situation that could have been holding you back or that could have been a bit restrictive on you um, in your life or maybe in some specific part of your life. But I have to say, Gemini, what goes on here is a little bit heavy handed. It's a bit uh, challenging and it's sharp, but it's also really clear. So with the anchor and clouds here, we have, I think, um, an important message. It tells us that you could have been hesitating about staying in a certain place. And the scythe and snake is very much about leaving. The snake and, and uh, scythe can also be a bite. Now, uh, it can so that can mean like someone is, is hurtful. But in view of everything else and in view of the anchor and many, uh, actually all of the cards, it, it's more about leaving and releasing yourself from a situation. It sounds like you'd been hesitating, thinking about it, you've been maybe dealing with it, but now is the time to, to make a change, Gemini. In the top row, we have the anchor ring and snake. And uh, normally this would be a really good combination for a relationship. It's about trust and security and a, a sense of closeness in a relationship. But with the snake here, uh, Gemini, maybe you are sort of moving away uh, from this relationship or at least making certain changes. You could also be restructuring things and you want to do things differently moving forward. The snake is also a card of diplomacy and tact. So it is about walk, don't run. So if you're going to uh, leave something or move away from something, then you want to do it you know, calmly and carefully. I have to say also, Gemini, that the snake in relationships is often a card of deception and uh, deceit. And so with the ring, it can point to a third party. Um, this, I can't you know, dismiss the possibility of this scenario playing out. Now, I think the cards in general are more about letting go of someone or something or a commitment or an involvement, uh, but that is uh, still a possibility for some of you. Now, the bottom row is very, very clear, Gemini. We have the scythe coffin and um, the clouds. This is definitely a combination for an ending and a parting. And with the clouds here, um, there can be a bit of a heavy atmosphere um, that comes through because of the change that is ahead. It can also point, uh, point into this, um, you know, the hesitation. So the thought process, how you do this, the planning, how will you go about uh, making this change? The Scythe and Anchor is very clear, Gemini, uh, very much um, a pouring into this uh, wobbliness, the hesitation, is that you need to uproot yourself or remove yourself uh, from a certain environment or a certain situation. And um, often this is a, a combination of release. So in this pair, I see the anchor as a ball and chain uh, type of situation. So with the scythe, you're able to release yourself from something that had been restrictive or holding you back. Now the ring and coffin can point to the end of a relationship or the end of a situation or a commitment or an involvement. And with the snake and clouds, like we touched on a little bit earlier, there is a sense of heaviness and challenge moving forward and also the idea of, well, how do I, how do I do this? How do I transition? How do I make this change? So it's uh, quite, it's quite a big deal. I think these cards, Gemini, I also feel that, you know, because, you know, these transitions, they're not, you know, so clear and cut, you know, they, they take a bit of effort, they take a bit of work. So I don't think that the cards are going to be restricted to just this week. I think, you know, it could affect a little bit, um, you know, maybe two, three weeks, you know, so it sort of pours into, um, the timelines around it. To wrap up, we have the anchor with the coffin and snake. Again, a clear combination of making a decision to, to let go and move on. And the scythe ring and clouds is a very clear combination of a separation. This is the classic combination of a divorce in relationships, but of course it applies to other situations, commitments, and it can also point to broken promises. Um, so it's, it's clear that there is a sharp uh, separation and transition for you this week, Gemini. Now the dynamics are very clear. I want to say um, or add that this situation, this ending, 
uh, can happen in any area of your life. It can be personal, it could be professional, it could be maybe a relationship you have with uh, someone like an accountant or a banker, you know, someone who gives you service, you know, or maybe some other person in your life. So no matter the context that is relevant to you, Gemini, the dynamic is, is pretty much the same. It's time to, you know, remove the restrictions and to let go of the situation and move on. It's a little bit complicated, I think, moving forward, but what we're seeing this week is really the transition more than anything else. So a bit of a, a bit of a tough one, Gemini, I have to say. I certainly look forward to your thoughts, your feedback. Let me know where this is playing out for you, how you're going to go about doing it. Uh, if you're ready at this point to, to move on, as always, I look forward to your comments. Very best of luck again, Gemini. Thank you for tuning in as always. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Cancer, here is your three by two and it's a little bit challenging. And to be honest with you, it's looking like a challenging week for many of us. Um, you have the flowers on this side of the three by two, which is always nice to see because it helps alleviate a little bit the stuff that's going on up here. Now we also have a relationship card in your cards and so there can be challenges with this person. I have to say, Cancer, that despite the flowers with the whip, wraps up ni nicely here on the right hand side of the three by two, I still think the whip is a little bit heavy handed and then these cards also don't help it. So I think the flowers is gonna help a little bit but I still think that there's gonna be some issues uh, that come up. Now, what kind of issues? So let's get into this. So the first set of corner cards, we have the snake and flowers. And I often take this combination to mean someone who is um, a little bit false to your face. You know, they pretend to be nice. And I think what happens here is that you see through that and um, there can be a confrontation. Um, the um, snake and flowers can also suggest someone trying to um, get you to do something or to invite you to something and it proves to be a trap or it's not so good or you know there isn't a clean intention or a 100% clean intention behind it and I think with the woman and whip and actually everything else that happens here I think you're going to see through that and it could lead to a confrontation. So the whip and woman is very much a combination of a confrontation. Now in the top row we have a pretty challenging line, Cancer. Honestly, the scythe and whip by themselves are quite challenging. I read this in my combinations master. I read this as the most challenging pair uh, in, the, in the deck. And then to add to this we have the snake. The snake and scythe I often take to mean something like a snake bite. So something hurtful or um, a difficult conversation. Now I also want to throw this out there, uh, Cancer, that um, challenging cards are not always that dramatic when it comes to real life uh, scenarios. They look pretty um, challenging and they can be, but just keep in mind that oftentimes you know it, it doesn't play out to be that tragic okay it's just a few times it's not it's not often that things are so dramatic so it, it is challenging there is a confrontation there is something challenging with a person there is a disappointment but it's probably not going to be the end of the world just like everything else is not at the same time i want to add cancer that perhaps it's time for you to draw a sharp line you know and and confront the situation and um bring it out into the surface. Th these are very outward uh, cards. The snake is normally quiet, but not in this combination. Here we're seeing a more outward, a more aggressive uh, kind of uh, aspect here that needs to come out. Now the bottom line, we have the woman clouds and flowers, and this would be, uh, this is a much softer line. Of course, we can't read it independently of everything else, uh, but it would, it is a, a good combination for uh, trying to look for the good out of the situation or trying to find a common ground with someone or trying to find some understanding. So a bit of a, a, bit of a, a glow and optimism here that can help with the overcoming uh, the confrontation. Now the snake and woman is a bit like uh, the snake and flowers. So someone who's not particularly honest or uh, you know a bit deceptive 
And I can also suggest, Cancer, that maybe you feel this way about this person where you're not really into this person. The scythe in clouds is very much about breaking through the clouds, breaking through the confusion, the hesitation, the doubts. It's important, Cancer, that I think you speak your mind. So at this point, it's uh, it's no longer playing nice. It's no longer putting up with it. It's really, it's about being forthright. The whip and flowers adds to this, and certainly the top row with the T cross here, um, you know, very much support this. Uh, but again, the flowers helps soften the energy a little bit. So it, it is a generally uh, difficult situation, a confrontational situation and challenging in any other way. Uh, but the flowers helps alleviate this a little bit. And it's nice to see it on this side of the three by two because it, it suggests that you, you know, you begin to turn things around. And the, the message overall is very much towards the idea of clearing the air, um, you know, speaking your mind, confronting the situation, clearing things up. And I think um, this is the focus within the week, but we do see this um, hint of uh, optimism and good things coming through as a result of this. Now, who the woman is is going to depend on your specific circumstances, Cancer, and the cards in general um, are, you know, they offer a clear dynamic, but in what context of your life they play out, that's, you know, for you to, to determine based on your specifics. I could say that it's a personal relationship, but it doesn't have to be. We have relationships in every area of life, at work, at home, in our hobbies, in our you know broader social life. So really it can figure in any context, but it is clear that it involves a person and a confrontation with this person and issues with that person and the need to really clear the air, draw the line, um, bring things out into the surface so that you can start working them out. One more thing, Cancer, is that a breakup is very possible or a separation of sorts is very possible with uh, such sharp cards. And I think with the flowers, you could find that it's a little bit relieving. Actually, with the woman's scythe and flowers, there can be a bit of a breakthrough here where there's a relief, a sense of relief. And again, the snake clouds whip is a challenging combination, just like everything else. It doesn't add uh, so much. So a bit of a challenging uh, week, Cancer. I think it's the case for many of us. Hang in there, get through this, and um, be honest. I think honesty is the best policy if we're going to um, uh, base the advice on these cards. Let me know how it plays out for you. Let me know who this person was or what the situation uh, is. Um, as always, I look forward to your comments. Again, best of luck with the week, Cancer. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Leo, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay Leo, here is your three by two. And you know, I'm picking up a bit of a tricky energy for many of us this week. Yours is really bright. We have the lovely sun, but we have also the fox and dog here and I'm highlighting this because it's also at the end of the three by two towards the right. So what could be going on here? Well, for starters, we have the person element, the people and friendship element that comes through with the dog. And here, another standout combination is um, the road with the cross, which points to changes. Now, the sun is a beautiful card. It is one of the brightest cards of the deck. So you're in for a really positive change. Now, let's start with the corner cards, Leo. We have the stork and the dog. This could be um, a change that is enabled with the help of a friend. It's also possible that you are busy and doing things with a friend. Now, I want to remind you that there's the fox and dog here towards the end. So we're going to see how much of a friend this person is. Now, the sun and fox is actually really bright. So this helps uh, brighten the fox a little bit. It's also possible, Leo, that the fox is pointing to work and jobs and projects. The fox is really good with discipline, getting things done. So you could be in for a positive change at work. You could get a job opportunity. You could get a customer, you know, and things like that. So very bright cards. And there is an er energy of um, things picking up, you know, things being kicked off. There is a, a sense of action and activity. In the top row, we have the stork with the cross and fox. Now this is 
a little bit different in energy. The cross can make things a little bit heavier. It is a card of decisions and it can point to important matters and the need to think about, you know, what you want to do and, um, you know, how you want to take things forward. Uh, with the fox, it can be about work or it can be about other disciplines and projects that you are uh, taking care of at this point. But definitely we are seeing with the stork an element of being active. So another thing that comes through here as well, Leo, is that you need to get things done and even the things that you are um, not enjoying or the things that are dragging your feet a little bit um, and the things that you feel are a little bit burdensome, you want to put up with it and get it done and move forward. Now in the bottom row, we have the beautiful sun, which is an all around success card. It's great for wish fulfillment, healing, a sense of lightness and clarity and all around happiness. We see it with the road and dog. So definitely positive changes are ahead with the road. And remember the road T crosses the cross along with the dog. So the dog here points to a really good relationship. It can be some kind of collaboration and going down that path with this person. It can also be going places with this person, meeting up with people, doing things with them. And there is a good sense of collaboration. So a lot of teamwork, a lot of, uh, you know, getting together, doing things together. Very nice with these cards. So it's definitely advice to play ball, Leo, to be there, to collaborate, to meet people halfway and to, you know, to be out there and to be active. The stork and sun is great for kicking things off, for positive change, for fruitful activity. You know, all sorts of good things can come through the stork and sun. There remains this element of being proactive and active because of the stork, but I think you're going to find that you do really well. And also you're, you're feeling enthusiastic, like you want to do it. Like I said, the cross and road is often a, the idea of being at a crossroads. So again, this element of having to make a decision, how you move forward with the project, whether you engage in this or not, and I think you will. Now, the fox and dog is really the combination I want to arrive at. It's often a tricky combination. The fox is a little bit tricky. It's not as toxic as the snake, but it's still a card that you want to, you just want to be cautious with certain people. You know, they're a little bit tricky to deal with. They tend to be self-interested. And, um, and so it's just that they might have intentions that are not always aligned with yours or everyone else's actually. They tend to be more focused on themselves. But at the same time, the uh, fox and dog can point to an employee, a colleague, or someone who offers some kind of service to you. People like, uh, you know, accountants and tax accountants, bankers, agents, you know, people like that are often well represented by the fox and dog. So maybe at this point you have an opportunity to get things done with the help of this person and this really helps you move forward. You have to make some decisions and that is fine, but I think it's, it's definitely a week to move things forward. Now in case the fox remains tricky on a personal, in a more personal way, Leo, it's a good idea to maintain a sense of calm and diplomacy. I think it's important not to jump the gun about anyone and also you know, do your share to play your part and maintain the peace. I think that's definitely called for this week. The rest of the cards are really bright. So I don't think they, I don't think the Fox, the more challenging aspects of the Fox come through as much in here. It's really more about keeping the peace and being diplomatic and tactful and clever and knowing how to work with people. Uh, but overall it's looking really bright and you're on the right track. You could be in for some important changes, like we said. So maybe you need people's input and people's help um, and you need that sense of collaboration. So, so be sure you're open to give and take. Now the stork with the road and fox to wrap up, uh, Leo is very much about change. I have to say it's possible that you're looking at a job change. Um, you know, we've got the sun and fox, which is great together. The other pair of corners is also supportive. In fact, everything, in the three by two is supportive about the changes uh, that you could be making on the job front. So you could land something pretty good. And the other um, triplet here with the sun cross and dog is also really bright. Uh, in terms of a friendship, it is someone supportive. Um, you know, there are responsibilities that you need to manage here. Maybe that is um, a little bit, uh, the, the thing that's a little bit weighing on you, uh, but otherwise it's looking really bright. 
And if this is about an opportunity for you to take up this job, then I think um, it could be quite significant for you and you want to enjoy this opportunity. So very nice cards, Leo active. There are changes. There's collaboration. It's looking pretty busy. Be sure to be there, be a good team player, you know, give and take and all the while maintaining the peace and being clever and, you know, solution oriented and focused on the goals. And if you've got a new job or a new project or a new customer or something like that, then that is looking really good as well, Leo. So let me know what you make of these cards. As always, I look forward to your, your feedback and you know how you how you resonated with these cards. It's always nice to see uh, the variety of experiences that resonate with the same set of cards. Very best of luck, Leo. Thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Virgo, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with the Silhouettes deck, my own deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Virgo, here is your three by two and we do see the whip in here. I have to say it's quite challenging for many of us this week, something is up. And uh, we see the whip with people cards in your context. And actually that's the case for, for many of us. It's nice to see the clover though. The clover helps, um, helps turn things around. It can also be a blessing in disguise. I often read the clover with challenging cards in this way. So let's get into the, the combinations. So the dog and whip Virgo is obviously a problem with someone. Something can come up. There can be a challenge that you need to deal with. It's also possible that they are experiencing a, a challenge and you need to, to come to their support. The Rider and Clover is actually a really nice combination. It points to good news and it also suggests that things may not be as bad as they sound uh, or they seem at first. It's also a really good combination for taking action and to move towards your goals. So if you had been uh, wanting to do certain things, uh, Virgo, then definitely you've got the green light to do this. Now the dog with the clouds and clover is a good combination to help you um, avoid negative thinking. So the, the combination asks you not to indulge in negative thinking that you are not, um, you know, you, sh you, you shouldn't have to, you don't have to. So don't, you know, don't dwell on, on negative thoughts. With the dog, they can be about a certain person or maybe someone causes you to doubt yourself in certain ways. And that would work well with the dog and whip. So again, you, you don't want to catch anyone's ball, Virgo. You don't want anyone to affect you or to cause you to think negatively of yourself. You know, so keep this in mind. Now the rider with the man and whip is challenging because the whip is at the end of the line. The whip by itself is challenging, but also at the end of the line is, it tends to be, um, you know, sort of like where you're heading. So we see here that there can be a confrontation with someone, just like we saw with the dog and whip in the corner cards. The writer though, being an active and proactive card, suggests that um, you don't want to back away from having a tough conversation. You might be the one to bring it up. Um, it can also be some challenging news that affects this person, but it's very clear that you want to face up to this Virgo and also with the clover, you know, you've, it's gonna, it's going to be minimized. It's not going to be as bad or as, as difficult as you might initially, uh, as you might have initially thought. The dog and rider points to meeting with a friend. I think here there's an opportunity to get together with someone or to hear from someone. The clouds and man can be a bit difficult. Maybe there's some tension with this person or, um, you know, there's a bit of, um, the, some thoughts that are not so clear about the relationship and where it's heading or the issue that comes up. And like we saw the clover and whip is that challenge, but it is alleviated uh, a little bit thanks to the clover. So I think there's an issue that could have been bottled up and that needs to be brought out. So the clouds, it's more on the inside because the clouds is very much about thoughts. It tends to be more psychological, uh, but with the clover and whip, it's outward. So it, it tells us that it's a good idea to bring things out into the open, that you don't want to keep them inside and that the other person shouldn't keep them inside. And that, you know, the clover says, it, you know, like it supports this outward energy. So talk things out, bring things out into the open and you'll find that it will be relieving, even if it's a little bit challenging. The dog, man, and clover is actually really nice to see because it tells us that the relationship can be saved and that there are 
good intentions and that people also or, or the other person also wants to see things resolved. The rider clouds and, and whip is very much about that bringing things out and you know having that talk or confronting matters and um, dealing with them. So it is more challenging but it's like I said it's really nice to see the clover on here. So Virgo, a bit of a challenging set of cards but not without um, a silver lining and not without positive outcomes. It is uh, a bumpy week for many of us. If you want to tune into other signs or other uh, parts of your horoscope chart like your rising sign and other um, planets that you like to look at, you will find that there's quite a few of us that have challenges this week so it looks like we're going through something. But again, be there for this, have the conversation and I think it will soon uh, turn around. Another thing, Virgo, is that the cards are broad in the sense that they tell us a dynamic with a certain person, but it can't figure in any context of your life, like many of these uh, weekly readings. It can be on, on a personal uh, front, it could be on the job front, it could be another person in your life where you confront this for the better. So you let me know where it figures in your life. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Libra. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you this week. Okay, Libra, here is your three by two, and I am seeing a relationship element. Like many of us this week, there is a relationship in focus, and there is the bird and coffin here, which can be a little bit challenging, a bit of a, some, a bit of nervous energy here. But I have to say, Libra, unlike many of us, uh, your cards are much calmer and softer. This week seems to be bumpy for many of us. There are challenges across different um, areas but a lot of them involve a relationship for you we're seeing something much softer so the garden and man is actually a meeting this is getting together with this person and the bird and moon most probably suggests an invitation now I have to su su suspect uh, Libra that with the bird and coffin and the coffin and house there can be a couple of things happening here or a couple of different scenarios maybe this person doesn't show up or maybe they show up after a time of absence, but in all cases, it could be a time to get together with someone. The top row, garden, a house, and moon, again suggests this element of place. Both the garden and house are place and location cards, and so they suggest a meeting. And the moon is a card of, um, it's a soft and gentle card. It brings attraction and positive chemistry between two people. It's also a card of invitation. So I think you can look forward to getting together with someone. However, Libra, I have to uh, suggest because of the bottom row that maybe this person uh, doesn't show up or doesn't show up immediately or maybe it's hard to get them to or maybe it's hard to get together with them um, or maybe it comes with a delay. The bird is uh, often a card of communication and with the coffin it can mean that this person is out of touch. Uh, but it's nice to see the moon and man on this side because it suggests that you could get together with this person after all. So again, it looks like it comes with a bit of a delay. Maybe this causes you a bit of anxiety, uh, but it looks like it comes through. I would suggest, Libra, that you don't fret about this. You know, take it easy and maybe let things happen on their own time um, naturally if possible. The garden with the bird is very much a combination of getting together with someone and the house and coffin, on the other hand, is about an absence. So the way I'm, I'm seeing this, Libra, is that it's possible that you initially um, make a, like you agree to get together, but then, you know, it takes a while before it happens. But it's nice, again, to see the man and moon together because it suggests that it comes through. So I do think that you're going to get together with this person. It looks like there's good chemistry, good energy. Um, it's just that getting there can be a bit, um, he could be a bit elusive, I think it's possible, or maybe circumstances get in the way where there's a bit of a delay or postponements and things like that. To look at the diagonals, we have the garden with the coffin and moon. So again, it seems to be a delay and things happening at a slower pace. 
I would normally suggest that the coffin and moon is the end of a phase and so I would have taken this line to suggest an ending and wrapping things up. Now it is possible for some of you but I think in view of the other cards I think it's more likely that it's a slower pace and um, slower for things to materialize with this guy. And then the bird house and man is very much a conversation or getting together with someone. Maybe you go somewhere, um, like somewhere like a restaurant or a coffee shop. And I say that because the bird can be a little bit busy and noisy. So it can be a bit of a noisier place, but that's just detail. And it's going to, you know, it's going to depend on you. Still, overall, I think the cards are good for getting together with this person. It's a bit slow. There might be things that get in the way, but it's nothing that really rocks the boat. Uh, Libra, so take it easy, um, you know, don't be impatient, there's no need for it. Um, and then now when you get together, it looks like, you know, there's going to be a nice connection. It could also open doors to something. And I say that because the moon is often a, a card of proposals and invitations. So maybe it's about exploring um, possibility and then you sort of have um, ways forward. Now the cards, like many of our weekly readings and actually a lot of the readings this week, um, they bring a person into the picture, but the context can be in your personal life, work life, other areas of your life. So if this is about work, for example, this can be a good time for interviewing, for meeting with someone and to see how you can collaborate. And I have to say, Libra, that if that's what you're after, you could maybe go through a job change. I've seen this with a couple of other signs, I think, as well. If it's a more personal thing, it's along the lines of my overall interpretation, getting together with someone and, you know, sort of taking it easy. So I would say uh, like an easygoing week in general, Libra, um, spending some time with, a, with this person and maybe a few other people, a bit slower, uh, maybe if it takes a bit of time to get things to materialize, that's okay. You know, it comes through. So let me know how you like these ideas, Libra. Let me know how you resonate with them, how they apply in your specific context. I always appreciate reading the variety of experiences that people uh, resonate and align with uh, from the same set of cards. Very best of luck with the week as always. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Scorpio, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you this week. Okay, Scorpio, here is your three by two. And I know these are challenging cards, but no surprise, it's a pretty bumpy week for many of us. And you're not alone uh, to have such challenging cards. I think I've seen them, was it Cancer? Um, and uh, a few other signs as well. So uh, Scorpio, these are challenging cards because these are separation cards. We have the scythe, we have it with the snake in combination with the ring. Now, of course, it's, uh, it can be a positive reading because depending on your situation, maybe you do want to get out of something or let go of someone or get out of a commitment. And if that's what you want, then these are perfect cards. Um, let's start with the corner cards. We have the mountain and, and scythe. Now this is actually a nice combination because the mountain is sometimes an obstacle card, a blockage, like this, um, this blockage that um, stands in front of you. It's like a strong boundary that says no, but with the scythe, you're able to break through that boundary. So that can be really relieving. And I've seen this with Cancer, I'm pretty sure it's Cancer, but it could be a water sign thing happening uh, this week where there is an obstacle and you're able to, to break through and get past it. The snake and ring is often a disappointment in a relationship. It tends to be, the snake tends to be uh, the card of deception. And so with the ring, uh, in a relationship context, this element of deception and cheating, outright cheating can, can be the case. Now that could be a scenario that plays out for some of you. I can't dismiss it. It could be coming from you or the other person. But I think the, the general outcome of this is that there's a, a parting and a moving away. So I think that you could be at a, at a stage, uh, Scorpio, where you're falling out with a situation and you, you just want to move on. And it could also be just generally that something is, is not working out anymore and it's time to move on. Now, what's interesting is, um, is the top row and how a T crosses the middle column. We have the mountain with the book and ring. 
The book and ring is very much a combination of a proposal and the book and moon is also a proposal, an invitation. The ring is a bit more binding, so it can be a contract or an agreement. And so looking at these cards together, you could get an opportunity or commit to something else that causes you to get out of where you are or what you're doing right now. That is very possible. The um, mountain and book can also um, suggest something that is still in the works, a bit more unknown, a bit more mysterious. But I think with the ring on this side, I think it's more about a proposal. So in this sense, the mountain can be a place abroad uh, and um, it could be a bit farther from where you are. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, another country, but um, it, it, it's suggesting that you are working on something elsewhere and it materializes and that could be the reason why you break things off. So the snake, moon and scythe is about uh, letting go and parting. The moon is going to soften the edges a little bit, but honestly, I don't think it makes a big difference to the overall outcome. The ring and scythe here is very clear. It is the card of divorce uh, and obviously getting out of something, breaking a promise, breaking a commitment, getting out of uh, certain involvements. So it's very clear how this is playing out um, in these cards. Earlier, we have the mountain and snake, and this um, is a pretty specific combination for me. I, I see it as getting around an obstacle. So here we have a more confrontational aspect. Here we have a more roundabout aspect. You know, which one it is exactly, it's probably gonna be a combination of two of the two. And it also gonna come down to your specifics, um, Scorpio, but it's, it's definitely time to um, get past certain restrictions and certain things that had been, you know, keeping you where you are. It's, it sounds like you're trying to get out of something. And like we said, the moon and book is a proposal and the ring and scythe is um, a combination of divorce. So very clear cards, Scorpio, very much a time to get out of something, but it's also very clear that it's because of um, a proposal or something that materializes for you. When we look at these uh, diagonals, we have the snake, book, and scythe. This is gonna be about breaking the silence. So the snake and book are both secretive cards. They both involve an element of silence, but the, the scythe is definitely gonna uh, open that up. Uh, the mountain with the moon and ring is about that proposal. So like I said, the ring and moon, the ring and book, very similar. And with the mountain, it could be a place abroad. So Scorpio, it's like you're waiting for the right time to announce the change or to announce the release. And uh, it looks like it can happen soon enough it looks like you're going to have um, the like you have the other offer or the opportunity in the works already. So it's going to give you the um, almost like the green light that you can now uh, let go. Um, so that that's great. That's a great reading for you know applying for jobs or applying for an opportunity or whatever specifically depending on how you work or operate. And it's not necessarily job related. It could be other projects, but in the context of a relationship, Scorpio, the cards are a bit more challenging because um, the snake in relationships is tough. The ring and scythe can also be tough. So I do feel this is a separation or a break off from someone. And maybe that's what you want, you know, and in this case, you know, so much the better. But in my experience, it tends to be a little bit, a bit trickier um, with relationships when we see, when we see these cards. But again, overall, it's time for a relief and a release and getting past whatever restrictions you're experiencing. So quite a quite a transition, uh, Scorpio. I certainly look forward to your thoughts on this, what played out for you, what it is you're trying to get out of, and how, um, how you're able to at this point. Leave me your comments. Thank you as always for tuning in. Best of luck with the week, Scorpio. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Sagittarius, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Sagittarius, here is your three by two and we do see the scythe in here. I'm seeing this a lot uh, in this week in our horoscope readings. For most of us, there's quite a few challenges coming up and also in the context of relationships. 
But I have to say that in your card, Sagittarius, it can take on a different meaning. It can be, it doesn't have to be challenging. Instead, it would just suggest something like a breakthrough or a sudden opportunity. Now we have the bird and moon at the corners here and this suggests a proposal or a discussion around an offer it can suggest negotiating something so this can be quite beneficial to you now the tower and scythe is a clear message of a release from the past so you could could be letting go of a situation you could make some changes uh, to the status quo and you could also be uh, resigning or letting go of a, a job or a company and that's because of this offer that comes in that would be in the context of work i have to say also sagittarius that i'm seeing this theme in quite a few signs so it's looking like a week for changes it's a bit turbulent for many of us and it can bring in some sort of transition now in the top row we have the bird with the star and scythe like i said uh, the scythe doesn't have to be challenging or suggest a separation necessarily. We see it next to the star, and the star is one of the brightest cards of the deck. It is about wish fulfillment and healing and happiness. And with the bird, it looks like a conversation goes well, or you get some really good news, and it could be a breakthrough uh, opportunity for you. And hopefully that's the case. Now in the bottom row, we have the tower with the man and moon, and again, the moon is a card that often suggests an offer, an offer of work, uh, some kind of positive evolution. With the tower and man, we could be looking at someone like a manager or someone from the past. And I say that because the tower can suggest the past or it can suggest someone who is um, who has like a higher position, if you like. So with the moon, you could get uh, a conversation with this man. Maybe it's an interview that goes really well. Maybe you get an offer. And that's in the context of work. The same idea can apply in other areas as well. The burden tower can suggest, um, I think there's a bit of anxiety here, Sagittarius, about how things can go. And also it's possible that you had been waiting for them for some time and it's been taking time. So maybe it's causing you a bit of um, anxiety at this point, but it can also suggest that you hear uh, from this person and also that um, it has to do with something administrative or official. Maybe you're having conversations with um, someone in, in such a capacity. Now the star and man is great, just like we saw in the top row. This brings very positive news. It looks like this man helps you achieve your goals or helps you um, with a positive step forward. The good news could be coming from this person as well because the star uh, T crosses both lines. Now the scythe and moon is often, um, so the moon is gonna uh, soften the edges of the scythe a little bit, but I do think that because of the very positive uh, pair with the star, I think um, the scythe and moon is also generally bright. It points to an offer, an opportunity, and because the scythe has a sudden uh, kind of quality, it can mean that you didn't expect it, or may maybe it's a bit better than you thought it would be, and uh, you're able also to, um, to move ahead with this. Now, when I look at this uh, scythe with the tower again like we said it has to do with breaking away from the past or you know being able to embrace something that enables you to let go of something it's possible that we uh, we look at the scythe and moon in the same way because the moon is a card of phases and maybe you're cutting short a phase and letting go of this in order to embrace this opportunity that seems to come in an unexpected way or perhaps better than you thought. So really these are some bright cards, Sagittarius, despite the, um, uh, despite the uh, scythe that can be a bit turbulent and despite the bird that can sometimes be a bit, um, causes a bit of nervousness, the cards are really bright and they suggest uh, some really exciting changes for you. So see if you embrace them. And like I said, this can apply in different contexts. It can apply in a work situation or in a more personal situation, maybe some other project that you take care of. Now, when it comes to personal relationships, I think here there's an opportunity to reconnect. And um, I think um, things can go in a way that maybe you didn't expect. I do think it's positive and there are ways forward with this person. Let's wrap up with a couple of diagonals. We've got the bird, man, and scythe. So again, this can be a conversation 
or and uh, an outcome of the conversation that maybe you didn't expect. I would have suggested that this could suggest um, like a separation or a break, but like I said at the outset, Sagittarius, I'm not really seeing this in this context. And uh, the tower, star, and moon is lovely. In fact, this is the brightest uh, line in the three by two, and it really points to wish fulfillment and um, like a beautiful thing unfolding here in the context of work, it can point to an offer or a promotion or some overall improvement that looks really bright for you. So these are some really nice cards, Sagittarius. Uh, I think that's a bit unlike many of the signs this week, although there is like a, there is like a, a bumpy energy. Things happen suddenly, quickly. They can be difficult. They can be good, but there is like a, a faster kind of pace that I'm picking up for us this week. So you let me know what you make of these uh, ideas and these cards, Sagittarius, how they played out for you. I always look forward to uh, reading the, you know, the variety of experiences that people have when they resonate with this set of cards. Very best of luck with it. Until next time, thank you for tuning in and take very good care of yourself. Hello Capricorn, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Capricorn, here is your three by two and it is quite bright. We are seeing a new beginning. I'm seeing this in a few different signs, but also in the context uh, of changes and a bit of turbulence, but we're not seeing so much turbulence in your cards, unlike many other signs this week, Capricorn. For you, it's a lot more smooth sailing. There is a bit of a bump here because of the clouds, but it's not usually a big deal. Clearly with the child and the road and the ship, we are looking at a new path and a new direction. It's looking really bright. So with the ship and road, you could literally be traveling. You could be going places. Um, and also you could be setting sail in a new direction. It's definitely a message to move forward, not to stall, to keep going and to pursue your goals. With the book and child, it's clearly a new chapter. So this can be a new beginning, something exciting and possibly something that you don't know everything about yet. This works well with the ship, which is a pretty adventurous card. Now in the top row, we have the clouds between the ship and child. So again, this new direction opening up, but the clouds can be a bit challenging. It causes doubts, a bit of stress, um, some tension, and you could be also hesitating about moving ahead. Uh, but I do think it's the right time for this Capricorn and I think that there are some pretty bright prospects. It might also suggest that you plan things out or maybe think things through as you step forward, but it's, it's definitely not here to, um, to discourage you from moving forward. There are so many cards that encourage you to embrace this change and to step ahead with it. In the bottom row, we have the book Flowers and Road. So this is some pretty good news. Um, there is a sense of uh, freedom and liberation that we see through the flowers and road. There's also an element of optimism. So something opens up and is revealed and it's, it gives you that push to move forward and really inspires you to, to move ahead. Uh, the book and flowers Capricorn is also a message of creativity. Uh, so maybe you're pursuing some creative ventures. It could be something like writing, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and so it's an encouraging message for you to express yourself, express your creativity, spend time doing these lovely things and really enjoying them. And that seems to tie into this new chapter and this new beginning as well. Now the ship and book can mean that you set sail in a direction that you do not know of yet. Uh, but again, it can mean kicking off these creative ventures. So that can be pretty exciting. With the clouds and flowers, this is another combination for creativity, you know, thinking outside the box and also indulging in your creative ventures. So really nice. And the child and road is clearly a new path, just like we saw with the child and ship, the child and book. So the recurrent messages all throughout your three by two Capricorn are uh, pretty consistent, but it's pretty tight internally. So a really nice message for a new beginning, setting sail in a journey, 
uh, moving ahead with creative projects and just pursuing ventures in this way. The cards, like many of our weekly readings, Capricorn, they don't really tell us in what area. I'm not seeing personal relationships as much. It seems to be more focused on your projects, but it could be your hobbies or it could be some kind of thing that you do on the side, or maybe it's about your job. Um, and actually, I'm seeing this in a few different signs that people could be lined up for a new job and it's looking like it's a, it's a good thing too. So wrapping up with a couple of more diagonals, we've got the ship with the flowers and child. Again, very beautiful for creativity. The child has an element of creativity through its association with the archetypal feminine. So very nice in here. And the book Clouds and Road suggests that it's, you know, you could be having doubts or wondering how it's going to go, uh, but you do want to move ahead anyway. Um, it has to do with, um, you know, embracing maybe some mystery and pursuing uh, this lovely path. It's looking really nice and exciting. So very nice cards, Capricorn. I really look forward to hearing from you how you resonated with the cards and how they apply to you in your situation. Very best of luck with the week as always. Thank you for tuning in and until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay Aquarius, here is your three by two and I have to say compared to many other signs this week, you're having a pretty easy week. Everything is looking in order. I don't think there is much um, different that happens this week. Things are stable, you're on the right track, you're getting things done. In the bottom line, we see that there's a bit of a, a, a social element here, so it might be a good time to be with people. The bird can suggest something like discussions, networking, and being out there. And in the top row, we're seeing a sense of stability, that you're on the right track, like you have really strong foundations and you're building on these foundations. Starting with the corner cards, we have the moon and dog, and this could be a hanging out with friends or inviting friends or being invited by them. And the garden and anchor complements this really nicely because like I said, the garden is a social card. With the anchor, you could feel at home within a certain environment, or you can anchor yourself within a certain group and you can establish yourself in a certain uh, space. So these are really great cards to be within a community and to you know, set yourself up in it and to grow roots and connections. In the top row, we have a very stable um, situation here. The moon unfolds gently and the tower and anchor are both solid cards. So obviously you're on the right track. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep building towards these goals. Aquarius, you are on the right track. They're also slower cards, so there's no need to rush. I mean, it's more about making sure everything is solid and uh, you know things are predictable and consistent. So that's really nice. With the garden bird and dog, this is a very clear message of networking, a community, being out there, you know, and the dog can be about friends or colleagues. It really depends on the situation or environment um, that you are focused on this week. And that would depend on, on you, like this, this would depend on your specific circumstances. The moon and garden is lovely for an invitation, for receiving honors and appreciation. So again, I feel that you're gonna do well within this community, within this um, group or market. Uh, Aquarius, it's, it's looking good. Um, the bird and tower can also suggest an element of longevity and focusing on the long term. It can also suggest a conversation with some um, you know, people of influence or people at the top, as it were. Uh, perhaps um, they, would, uh, they would support you in your ventures here. And the anchor and dog is really nice for relationships, solid, secure relationships, trustworthy relationships. You can also rely on other people, it seems, Aquarius. So there's a lot of um, group kind of energy, even though the tower is sometimes a bit uh, isolated. The rest of the cards are really supportive of strong connections and um, um, you know support, give and take uh, with others. Now the cards are brawn in the sense um, that they don't really tell us in what situation uh, this figures, which I have to say is the case for many of our weekly readings. 
Uh, so it could be job related, work related, or something else that you do. It can also be personal, uh, you know, with your friends and your social circles. So very much a social week, regardless of the context, Aquarius. It's about being out there, giving and taking and communicating, uh, building on what you've done and connecting with others whom, you, uh, whom I'm pretty sure you're gonna find supportive in your ventures. It's also a good time to take it easy, Aquarius. So these are slower cards. Uh, you know, there's no need to rush or to be pushy. You know, just really chilling, I think, uh, because things are predictable and it looks like you're on the right track. I would say across the board as well. So wrapping up with a couple of diagonals, we have the moon, bird, and anchor. I think this is an invitation and I think you are probably gonna accept it. So again, this communication element coming here. And the garden and the tower and dog, I think these are long-term connections and I think they could be helping you build something over the, the longer term. The, um, the tower and garden can sometimes be about work. And so with the dog, we could be looking at your colleagues. Um, so again, it depends on your specific uh, circumstance or whatever context you feel is more relevant for you with these cards. So a nice week overall, Aquarius, smooth, easygoing, um, nothing big, nothing you know unusual, just uh, uh, really focusing on your community and getting the word out there and, and building, uh, building it from there. And, uh, you know, just being with people, giving and taking. Let me know how it plays out for you, Aquarius. Let me know in what context you feel these cards figured. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and how, um, how the cards play out for different people. It's always interesting to read. Thank you for tuning in, as always. Very best of luck with the week. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Pisces, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay Pisces, here is your three by two. It's a, it's a curious spread, um, mainly because the mouse figure is on this side of the three by two. And these cards are more or less neutral, but there is a strong relationship element here. And um, it can be personal, it could be professional, that's because the ring and dog is more on the personal side of things and the lily can be about work and career. So let's, uh, let's weave these cards together. We have the anchor and lily. So this is about stability and the long term and your journey, I would say. It can also be a combination of career where you are settled in your work. And uh, so this is looking pretty solid. It's definitely a message to keep doing what you're doing. And the ring would also suggest that. Now the book and mouse would point to something like misinformation or having knowledge gaps or lacking information. So if you need to cover off some gaps in your skills or your knowledge Pisces, then you need to do that. It's also a good idea to get into details, to get into um, the books as it were, really focusing on uh, the details as much as possible and this way you'll also be able to dig out any gaps so a bit of a focused uh, focused effort this week Pisces that you get into the weeds a little bit shall we say the anchor with the ring and mouse is great for um, stability and sticking with what you're doing uh, the thing about the mouse is that maybe you're feeling a bit stressed maybe you're overworked pisces and you have a lot to do and also you know when you focus a lot on details it can be a bit draining as well but uh, with the anchor and ring it's definitely an encouragement to stick with what you're doing so try to see it through try to get past the uh, the stress and the challenge i feel pisces that you're nearing burnout and that maybe you're going to be heading for a break or some kind of vacation soon. But within the week, I think this is about getting things done and finalizing things and working through them. So keep doing what you're doing and try to put up a little bit with the stress. Now, the mouse can also um, suggest that the relationships that are suggested by the ring and dog are a little bit difficult. They're a little bit challenging. Um, but um, again, the anchor and the lily, they're strong and stable cards and I'm not seeing that you need to give up on anything. It's more about managing it and trying to deal with it. In the bottom row, we have the book with the dog and lily. And I really feel Pisces that this has to do with growth and um, learning. 
Um, the Lily tends to be a more senior and mature card and the dog is actually a junior card and the book is about learning and knowledge a lot of the times. So this is a really good line to suggest the idea of growing, learning, refining your expertise, becoming more expert, becoming more um, more specialized. Um, so this is a, a bit of a learning phase, Pisces, where you need to stick with something until you understand it. You know, you need to be disciplined about it. I think there's an element of stress and annoyance because of the mouse. But again, I think this is important for you, Pisces. So see if you, you know, you stick with it so that you really learn from it. Now the anchor in book is uh, also good for knowledge, information, having confidence in your skills and knowledge. Um, it is also a suggestion to double check everything. So certainly with a warning card like the mouse, you definitely want to get into the details so that you double check everything. The ring and dog is usually a love relationship that comes out of a friendship. Now I'm not so sure this is the case here. Uh, it can be for some of you. Um, at the end we'll go over the couple of scenarios here, uh, but it is normally a solid relationship. And the mouse and lily, I feel uh, Pisces can be a bit of stress. The lily is sometimes a health oriented card and with the mouse and what we saw earlier, um, it can mean that you're getting uh, stressed out and tired and maybe it's time to wrap things up to get ready for a break. So the cards can go in a couple of different scenarios like I was saying. In terms of work, which I think is the more likely uh, interpretation of the cards, of course it depends on your, on your um, specific situation, but I, I feel they tend more towards work projects and your activities. So in that sense, it looks like you are in a learning and a building phase and um, it can be a bit challenging right now. I think you could be stressed or reaching a level of burnout Pisces, but we're not exactly at the end of the road yet. So see if you can bear with it just a while longer until you get to the bottom of it. And in the process, you, you wanna get into the details. This is important Pisces. We have a bit of a red flag here through the mouse and the anchor really telling you to double check things. But apart from that, it looks like you're on a solid foundation and things are building. Now, when it comes to personal relationships, I think the relationship is okay. I think it's on, you know, it's it's there. Um, there is a strong foundation for it. It just seems like with the mouse and Lily, especially on the right hand side of the three by two, it sounds like there is a bit of a, um, a bit of a bumpy phase or some doubts here, and some things that need to be ironed out. Now, what's interesting is that because these cards are towards the right. This is still in transition. So we're not really seeing a bottom line or an outcome um, of this yet. So really just working through this and, and managing it. So wrapping up with a couple of diagonals, we have the anchor with the dog and mouse, which is very similar to the top row. So again, some bumps in the relationship, but really they, you know, not enough to compromise this, the strength of the anchor. And the book ring and lily is actually a, a really nice combination for a proposal and a longer term commitment. So that is quite interesting. Uh, you could be questioning certain commitments or wondering, you know, how far you want to take them. Um, but it can also mean that you are, you're sort of adjusting for a longer term commitment. This can apply in your work or in a relationship. So that, that's actually quite exciting. Um, but right now, the mood, uh, Pisces, is not really festive. Okay, the, the mood of your cards are a bit more serious. They're more down to earth. They suggest committing, um, you know, keeping your promises, working through issues and not giving up, even if there are problems and even if you're feeling a little bit burned out and tired and you want to break. So deal with it a little bit, Pisces, stick with it, you know, don't give up on it, work through the issues. This is good for your work, for your projects, even for a relationship. Uh, you know, this is about the longer term. And so anything you're seeing right now in terms of issues is, is temporary. So, so try to see the forest for the trees. And I, I want to, I also want to say Pisces that the mouse is really not very dramatic. It doesn't tend to be a very challenging card. It becomes challenging if you if you don't uh, take the advice of 
um, taking care of things while, while they are small because if you leave them out of control they can grow into something bigger and you don't want that so actually the mouse often operates as some kind of red flag and a helpful warning sign to encourage you to take care of things while they're, they're small so that they don't get out of control and we saw this in the uh, corner cards here with the book and mouse and also with the anchor and, and um, book so both um, both combination combinations encourage you to um, to look into the details to double check everything read the fine print and do these things so that nothing escapes you and that is always helpful so I would say it's also peaceful Pisces it's looking like a peaceful week it looks like a routine uh, kind of week um, you know uh, people are involved maybe not too many people but supportive people I still you know a few challenges here to work out and um, you'll hopefully be on the other side of this and you can take a bit of a vacation here so let me know what you make of these cards Pisces as always I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback I always look forward to um, the variety of uh, situations that people go through when they resonate with these cards very best of luck with the week Pisces thank you as always for tuning in and until next time take very good care of yourself